Brain scans post contrast. It's a little blow up view of the axial scan and a coronal post gadolinium enhanced scan. And this is the first question. What would you say is the best diagnosis here? Would you say that this is most likely, one, number one, a vestibular schwannoma, number two, meningioma, number three, facial nerve schwannoma, number four, labyrinthitis, or number five, Bell's palsy? Let's see whether we can get the countdown going and see whether it works. <laughs> All right, let's see the results. Okay, so far and away, 83% said answer number five, which is Bell's palsy, and that is indeed the correct answer. Very good. Bell's palsy, as you know, is a latent herpes simplex infection that resides in the geniculate ganglion. It usually will cause peripheral facial nerve paralysis. One of the things that you will have to do is make sure you don't see any lesions in the parotid gland that may also be causing a peripheral nerve, facial nerve palsy. It is a process that usually resolves in a few weeks, and in fact, imaging is really restricted to those individuals who don't resolve over the course of a week, uh, couple weeks. And the treatment is usually either steroids or antivirals or just watchful waiting. <clears throat> the related disorder would be Ramsey-Hunt, where you actually have little uh, otic vesicles related to the ear as well as pain. The next question for the audience is, what parts of the facial nerve may normally enhance? Would it be A, intracanalicular and labyrinthine portions, B, labyrinthine and tympanic portions, uh, number three, tympanic or intramastoid portions, number four, labyrinthine and intramastoid portions, or number five, none of the above, no parts of the facial nerve should normally enhance. Go ahead and put in your answers at this point. And we'll do the little countdown. Again, intracanalicular labyrinthine number one, labyrinthine tympanic number two, tympanic intramastoid number three, labyrinthine intramastoid number four, or number five, none of the above. And the audience says a broad range of answers. <laughs> and the yellow bar is the correct answer, that is the tympanic and intramastoid portions may normally enhance. And this is a finding that we look at over here. This is the intracanalicular portion of the facial nerve. Then we have what we would call the labyrinthine portion. We hit the geniculate ganglion and what you see coming off here is a greater superficial petrosal nerve. Then we have our tympanic portion and then going inferiorly would be your intramastoid portion. It's been shown that the tympanic and intramastoid portions of the facial nerve may show contrast enhancement, but it would be pathological for the intracanalicular or labyrinthine portions to show enhancement. The geniculate ganglion does show enhancement as well. And what you're seeing is the geniculate ganglion enhancement. This portion here, which is the intralabyrinthine portion, is pathologic in the case of Bell's palsy. And I refer to this article quite frequently with our fellows. This was an excellent article written, well, quite some time ago by Steve Gabarski from University of Michigan in which he looked at facial nerve enhancement in normal individuals who had no symptoms whatsoever. And what he found was that the facial nerve enhanced in these normal individuals, asymptomatic individuals, in 76%, and with 69% of those 76% had some asymmetry in that one side may have enhanced more than the other, or one side may have enhanced not at all. And what he postulated was that the cause was the circumneural facial arterial venous plexus that occurs around the geniculate ganglion and the intramastoid and tympanic portion of the facial nerve accounts for that contrast enhancement. So it's normal to see those enhance, that enhancement, and it's also normal to see one side tympanic or intramastoid portion enhanced, and yet the other side may not. So asymmetry is not to be concerned with when you're dealing with the tympanic and intramastoid portions. And as you look at this sort of serial examination of a patient, one sees the geniculate ganglion enhancement. We see the tympanic portion. Focal area here where the tympanic portion is not enhancing, and then it does enhance once again. And then we have the intramastoid portion showing the contrast enhancement. That is absolutely normal.
So what's in the differential diagnosis of those foils that I gave you for that initial first question? One of the things that you may consider is the facial hemangioma. This typically occurs at the geniculate ganglion. It may have a little speckled appearance like you would expect with a hemangioma of bone and it may also affect the tympanic portion. This is a facial nerve hemangioma. This is an individual who had a facial nerve schwannoma at the level of the geniculate ganglion. One of the other things that may cause facial nerve enhancement is perineural spread of tumor. This is an individual who had a large parotid tumor and one can see that it is infiltrating into the stylomastoid foramen and on our coronal, I'm sorry, our sagittal scan, you see tumor extending up the facial nerve. This is the descending intramastoid portion of the facial nerve. This would be the tympanic portion at the second genu of the facial nerve. And one can see tumoral extension here. With contrast enhancement, this would be expected to, in, to show contrast enhancement as well, and therefore is part of the differential diagnosis. So once again, let's review and get our button boxes ready. The classic finding of Bell's palsy is what? Is it number one, enlargement of the facial nerve? Number two, enhancement of the tympanic portion of the facial nerve. Number three, geniculate ganglion enhancement. Or number four, enhancement of the facial nerve at the junction of the fundus, which is the entry into the interauditory canal and the labyrinthine section. Go ahead and put in either numbers one through four. What is the typical finding with Bell's palsy? We can start the timer here. Okay, and the audience says, so you've actually gone downhill since I've explained the entity, so <laughs> give them the hook. <laughs> um, this enhancement at the junction of the fundus and labyrinthine section is the area where the nerve is going through the tightest portion of the canal, at the fallopian canal. And therefore, as the nerve swells, it will show contrast enhancement. So number four is the correct answer. Genica ganglion enhancement and tympanic portion of the facial nerve may occur in normal individuals. Okay, we'll move ahead. Next case. This is a patient who had headaches and the 